Klimatforskare och Naturvårdsverket hävdar att svenskarnas utsläpp från flygplan ungefär motsvarar utsläppen från alla våra bilar, 10-11 miljoner ton koldioxid per år. Men häromdagen så kunde vi läsa att svenskt flygs generalsekreterare Henrik Littorin, han menar att det här är alternativa fakta, fake news. I själva verket så är utsläppen från flyg mycket mindre och då räknar han bara på, de, på det flygbränsle som, som säljs i Sverige och utsläppen från dem. Så jag tänkte fråga en framstående klimatforskare, Kevin Anderson, som jag har om det är rimligt att räkna på det sättet. What do you say, Kevin? You're professor at Uppsala. Uh, is it reasonable to claim that the emissions from flying, the Swiss flying, is equivalent to the, to the amount of fuel for flying that is sold in Sweden? What's your opinion on that? I think overall I would say it's, it's somewhere between either deliberately misleading the public or misunderstanding the basic science of climate change. We are interested in climate change and our emissions because of the warming effect that they, that they have in the atmosphere. And when we emit carbon dioxide at altitude when we are flying, the impact on the warming is much greater than when we emit carbon dioxide and when we are driving a car. And very roughly, if you put out um, a ton of carbon dioxide from an aircraft, that has the amount of warming that's equivalent of about two tons from a car, very approximately. So you'd have to double the amount of carbon dioxide to make an equivalence between a plane and a car. Um, in addition to that, I think it's really fairly clear to most of us that when a lot of people fly from Sweden to other parts of the world, whether it's Thailand or the United States, we may not fly directly from Arlanda to Thailand. We are likely to fly from Arlanda to somewhere in Europe, could be Frankfurt um, or one of the other big airports in Europe, and then fly from there to Thailand or to the United States. And those, the responsibility really for those emissions for the Swedish people who are using these transit airports, really res that responsibility really resides with, with Sweden. Mm. And I think when you take the extra warming from flying it, from the emissions coming out at altitude, mm. plus the fact is that we often fly through these transit airports, mm. then the emissions are going to be much higher. And that I, I uh, think maybe a, a, a somewhere about 11 tons that they're suggesting doesn't seem too unreasonable to me. And certainly to hold it as just saying being three tons is is scientifically um, misleading. Okay, and it's kind of this Svenskt flyg that I refer to, it's a lobby organization, also pretty linked to politics because its chairman, for instance, is a politician in one of the big cities of Sweden, Niklas Nordström, and this Henrik Litterin, the general secretary, is, has been working for 15 years on the state agencies with Avia. So what do you think that about their using this language referring to climate science as alternative facts or fake news. What does it say about the debate on aviation? Well, I mean, there are two ways, again, of looking at that. Either, again, they fundamentally misunderstand the basic science, and if that's the case, they really shouldn't be speaking about these issues until they've gone away and found out about the basic science. Or, they're more disturbingly, they're taking a sort of very Donald Trump approach to try to deliberately confuse issues, to misunderstand the public. Mm -hmm. And I think if you have public figures that are deliberately trying to, under, to misunderstand, um, misinform the public, mm -hmm. um, that's not an appropriate way for public figures to act. Yeah. So either way, they seem to me to be either um, willfully ignorant um, or deliberately misle misleading the public. Yeah, okay, that's pretty serious. So, but if we, if we don't consider the language, but look at the development of the aviation, mm. then the industry would say that uh, we, c we, we can actually fly more and more, we can expand uh, aviation even more because there are, a transition is possible to biofuels and perhaps in the long run even electri electric fly flights. Uh, so what do you think about that? Is it a good idea to actually uh, increase fl flying in order to make the transition to renewable energy, renewable fuels more rapid? Mm. Well, uh, let's be clear, it's certainly a good idea to undertake the research to try and pursue alternative low carbon, zero carbon, ideally, forms of flying. But it, again, their position misunderstands the basic science. That when we put carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today, we fly somewhere today, that carbon dioxide is guaranteed to change the weather for hundreds of years, if not many, many centuries beyond. You know, it could be a thousand years or more. Um, and therefore, whilst we may have ways of having low carbon flying in the future, every flight we do today is changing the climate. 
So in the interim, we must have no growth in aviation, and ideally, we need to, not ideally, if we want to meet our Paris commitments, then we need to bring aviation emissions down very rapidly. So the science tells us, if we want to, emit, uh, want to abide by our Paris commitments, these are commitments to poorer people in climate vulnerable parts of the world, or indeed our own children's future, if we are genuinely concerned about those, then we need to curtail how often we are flying. Now, in the interim, we do the research, and if in 10 or 20 or 30 years' time we have low-carbon flying, we can then expand the airports. But until that position, um, until that we've, we've got that solution, we need to reduce how often we are flying. Okay, that's the harsh message, harsh message from Kevin. Thank you for attending this little video. Thank you from Vspeak.